Hi guys, my name is Subtruder, I'm the man on the Silver Mountain, and welcome back. Now today, I wanted to talk about being judgmental. More specifically, five ways to avoid being judgmental. Uh, mostly because being judgmental can be horrible, and it's a bit horrible to be um, kind of <laughs> set upon by a particularly judgmental person. But also, it can be really negative for you to be judgmental. It can burn bridges, it can break things down, it can leave you isolated. Um, and so as a result, I, I wanted to, to go through this five part thing, which have a couple of sections have kind of subsections to them as well, but we'll, we'll get onto those, um, which un has the unfortunate kind of um, um, unfortunate initialing of uh, rear P, whereby we realize, explain, accept, remember, and then practice. And so we'll go through what I mean by each of those just now. So first off, you've got to realize a couple of things, yeah? The first thing you've got to realize is that you're being judgmental due to your own perceptions, your own uh, creation in your own mind of what the world should be, of what the world is, of how the world should function, and it's not always going to be built on fact. In fact, most of it is going to be built on complete nonsense that you've been told or that you've assumed or... That, that you were raised around and internalized. And the first thing you need to realize is that that is entirely in your head. Yeah, the world never works the way you want to think it does unless you've got it backed up with evidence. If you said, in the place where I live, water runs downhill, then there's a good chance that for the most part, you're gonna be completely correct wherever you are. But if you go, well, where I, where I, I don't know, random, random, judgmental thing um, where I where I come from and where I was brought up people don't swear yeah and you start and you're judging people for swearing they are bad people because that is what they do um, in, in which case I'm, I'm sorry first off swearing has been demonstrated to be healthy to demonstrate a level of honesty um, and straightforwardness um, but as a result, that, that assumption is something that you have been raised around or something that you have assumed or something that you have made the connection between in your in, entirely in your own head. And so as a result, it's not only not fair to Im attempt to impose that on the rest of the world around you, it's also just, just wrong. It's not going to get you anyth anywhere because it's not built on fact. And then the second thing you need to realise, though, is when you actually judge i.e. the action of doing so. And it's a case of, of kind of going, you know, of, of questioning your assumptions and of questioning the, the way that you approach people. Because it can be very, very difficult to judge. And, some, and their judging has a purpose and a reason. But for instance, in what I do, if I judged everybody that I sat down with instead of purely go asking questions then that would mean that people would clam up, they wouldn't talk to me, I wouldn't get anything out of them, I wouldn't be able to challenge their assumptions because I wouldn't be on their side. I'd instantly be at odds with them. Um, there would be people that I would potentially have real difficulty working with, even though we were basically on the same wavelength about the things that we, we were discussing, things we were going over. Um, and, and that becomes difficult and, and especially when I'd be talking to people about things that are incredibly sensitive like relationships, like their, their uh, upbringing, their, their home life, their uh, careers and things like that. If I'm at odds with that person because I have put myself at odds with that person, um, you know, I'm not going to get anywhere for me, I'm not going to get anywhere for them and I fail at my purpose. So that's, that's the, the, the first part, those two realizations that, that firstly, the world isn't always going to be, and in fact, most likely won't always be what you think it is. And secondly, when am I actually doing this? And then when you've actually started judging people, and that sounds horrible when I say it that way, but where, even if it's a small judgment or a big judgment, when you are judging, um, the first thing to, to do to try and rework the way that you are considering this person is to look for explanations as to why they may be like that. Um, for example, uh, a young manager 
who has very little experience, is somewhat awkward and insecure, who imposes himself on other people. I could judge him as just a shit manager, as a terrible person. And chances are, because I have judged him as that, he would then continue to live up to show me that he is. But there have been numerous young managers that I've met who are like this, by the way. Um, and yet then what I do instead is go, okay, well, I'm going to try and explain why he's like this. Well, he's a young guy. He's, he's therefore insecure about all manner of things because he's only just left school. I can, I can associate with that. That's a miserable place to be. What else? Well, he's been thrust into this management position that he went for because he felt it was expected of him or because he, he, want, he has his own aspirations, but he's uncertain. But he knows that he's supposed to be in charge, but he doesn't know how to be in charge, so he's in, uh, trying to assert himself by, be, by just imposing on people, by, by being inconvenient and, and preventing people from actually working rather than helping them out. Okay, so now that I now that I understand some more of of maybe where this is coming from, he's a more sympathetic character. I still might not like being around him, I, or I still might not enjoy uh, tackling problems that he has created. Uh, I still may not enjoy working around the issues that others bring to me in regards to this individual. But at least I can appreciate that so I'm not at odds with that person. I can be sympathetic and understanding enough to deal with that person directly instead of trying to put, build a wall around myself to prevent them from getting near. The next thing that you need to do is accept. And again, this is something that we talked about earlier in the week. Um, but you need to accept when you can't do a thing. Yeah, so I can't control, in the, the example that I gave a minute ago, I can't control this person's actions. But what I can do is make suggestions, I can try and remain on his side, I can understand where he's coming from as best as possible, and I can try and work with him around solutions and around other things to try and tackle the various situations that, uh, that he's, he's creating. And then potentially, through accepting that, he might also accept the help that I would offer to solve that situation. Because I'm not making assumptions, I'm not judging him, I'm not being negative. What I am doing is being there to support and try and understand. It might be difficult, it might not be pleasant, but at the same time, it's the, the effort and the, the openness that matter there. Because also once you've accepted that and gone, okay, well they are just a, that that is just the way that they are, then you can focus on what you can control. I can control me. I can control my environment. I can control parts of the things that are going on. And as a result, those are the places that you can tackle. You don't have to just judge and judge and judge and be negative and be negative and be negative. Because most judgments in various ways turn into a negative. Yeah? Whether they are a direct negative, as most judgments or people who are accused of being judgmental are, yeah, it's a, it's a negative thing about this person, or it's a negative thing that I'm focused on that ha happens to revolve around this, or whatever else, it's, it's just not healthy. And then when it comes to making judgments that put people in an overly favourable light, kind of a positive discrimination, if you will, then that puts a lot of pressure on that person, which then leads to a negative to them because they're feeling under pressure, they're feeling stressed, they won't achieve as much, they won't do as well because they're all um, kind of wound up in their own heads because of this extra pressure that's put, been put on top of them and it's building on them. Um, so, you know, you need to, to keep that in mind. But then we've got remembering. And this is the, this is the thing that stops us from beating ourselves up when we do judge or when things are actually as bad as they once appeared and so we've got four things under this this heading here we've got the first one which is everyone judges we as as humans as people we are as animals we are designed to make judgments that is why we 
you know, it's a survival mechanism as much as anything else. We judge between one thing and another thing for the best option. We judge between numerous different ways of living to, to choose the right path or the perceived right path. Um, you know, the, the best path for the situation. We do um, all of, the, all of these, these things and there is a time to judge. There is a time when a judgment needs to be made, be it based around who you're sleeping with, be it based around who your, your friends are, where you're eating tonight, um, based around uh, current affairs, based around the lives of your friends. You know, there, there are times where judgment calls need to be made and where they need to be voiced, yeah? Um, a, f a friend of yours is being abused very actively by their partner, right? That's a time to, instead of being non-judgmental, that could just be their, their relationship. That's probably a time to inquire to see if things are okay rather than just sit and be quiet and accepting, yeah? There, there's there's a, a balance there that, that needs to be found. But again, when you if you find yourself being judgmental, we are designed to do so. You know, when I'm sat coaching someone, yes, I'm there to not judge what they are doing, not judge what they are saying. I am there to purely reflect it back to them so that they can make sense and find a way forward. When I am Seb by myself, I am able to turn around and go, this is ridiculous. And at times I have tried on this channel to also pitch the two at the same time, where I can go, as a result of looking at it through this method methodolo methodological lens, I can then make a judgment on it. As with um, parts of planning, where you are able to go, right, well, I am able to take a step back, have a good perspective on everything, and from this perspective, based on the facts that are here, I can make a judgment then, after being removed from making judgment, I can, and to, to pull in as much information as possible about your options, you can then make the decision between the two. And then the next, um, the next thing is that to, to remember that life isn't always perfect. A lot of a lot of judgments are drawn out of us seeking a perfect life, uh, seeking a a an ideal or a higher standard that you are not going to be able to achieve in in most situations. And so realizing that life won't ever be perfect, again, allows you to focus on the things that you can work on rather than things that you can't control. And that's important for for so many different reasons, purely because if you continue to compare and continue to, to, to look at the world around you and go, this isn't fair, it needs to go my way, it needs to, to um, kind of go and deal with, with all of these things so that it can be exactly the way it should be because it should be this way. That's how you get to extremism. That's where you get to, to damaging ideologies. That's where you get to stuff that people just can't live up to. And, and it, it breaks things down, quite frankly. It's, it's, it turns into something horrible. And that's where we need to stop comparing between people. Yeah, um, this is what I've said about social media, you know, where we're, where we're always comparing to each other and, our, and the, the lives that we distribute to everyone via social media. It's usually not an accurate representation, to say the least. And yet it leads to anxiety, insecurity, depression, kind of aggressive self-judgment, which it can even lead to things like um, conditions like anorexia and bulimia and things like that as well, as a result of these these um, comparisons that we make, which are often unfair, not based in fact, and usually wrong. And so, you know, stop comparing. Um, don't worry about the perfect and make the judgment calls that are worthwhile, not just judging everything and everyone for the sake of it. But also, the last point around remembering is you have to remember judgments by themselves are a tool. They aren't bad. They're not good. They're not bad. They are a tool. Without that tool, our species wouldn't have survived as well as, well as we have. Without our ability to make very complex judgments based around an awful lot of information, we wouldn't have been able to progress as much as we have. And so 
remembering that, it, that, that, that making judgments isn't a bad thing, but there are bad times and bad places for them is the is the more important thing than just beating yourself up over judging yourself, judging other people, making comparisons, trying to seek perfection. In my mind, seek a high standard. Be the standard that you want to see. Encourage it, but don't demand it. And that's where the judgments come in. Judgments are the result of demanding better rather than living to better and encouraging others to follow along with. And then the last part of this entire five point thing is you need to practice. It can take a long time to stop judging people. It can take a long time to learn how to. And, and you know, it can take an awfully long time to work your way through the, the mire that is realizing in the first place when you're doing it and why you're doing it. You know, your, your creation, what makes up that, that um, mindscape that then you want the real world to resemble. Yeah, um, that's that's the the why you judge, and then the the when you do it is how you catch yourself off, so that then you can ask the questions about explaining and accepting and how you can move forward. And a lot of people again don't take the time to look at the in, to to do the introspection and to to do the kind of soul searching and asking questions on themselves and and asking questions of their own assumptions that allows for this practice and allows for, for stepping away from being judgmental in the first place and being negative in the first place, you know, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted to make um, this video because as much as judgment calls can, can be made and I, as anyone else, will make judgment calls on a daily basis um, around both important and unimportant things, when you are judging other people especially, or other, or other collectives of people. When you are making blanket statements based on those judgments, or you are judging them and deeming them unworthy, or, or putting unnecessary and un, really undeserved pressure on those people, that's when things break down, and that is when the rear P method, God, I hate that name, but, the, but where this method stands out as being um, substantial and worthwhile and something that needs to be um, kind of at least considered in regards to how you are interacting with and dealing with people generally. But anyway guys, are there any other things that you would add to this, you know, just out of interest? Are there any other things that, that you would uh, do to try and remove yourself from judging others unfairly? Um, you know, please let me know down in the comments, or let me know about your experiences, either being judged or being judge or being judgy in <laughs> judging others. Um, you know, just because again, there's so much more to learn. I've only got my uh, my my kind of education and training, uh, the experience that I've got from other people so far. But relatively speaking, the number of people I've coached, the number of people I deal with, the number of friends that I have, and and family, and whoever else drop in the ocean compared to the rest of the seven billion people out there so uh, you know we've all got our own stories and sharing them is the way that we learn so you know especially around something like this we're being less judgmental being less uh, focused on our own kind of perfect ideal worlds would probably just be beneficial to so many people these days um, you know as a result I'd, I'd really like to hear your stories and things just so that we can compare and see if there's anything else that I can add to this uh, this kind of five point um, method to become less judgmental. But anyway, guys, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you enjoyed this video or found it interesting, then please drop us a like, share this video and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the video tomorrow. Take care.